since this both seems to be the theme of the crisis of the present moment and also the unique unifying thread throughout the Western religion that most insistently of all religious systems on earth it is the Western systems that have insisted in appointing an end to their world uh, the cyclical worlds of Hinduism are cycles of time so vast that they lose all force on the popular imagination. But what uniquely distinguishes Judaism, Christianity, and Islam is this insistence that God will come tangential to history in a way that will create... Uh, a scenario of last days, of a great uptaking of souls into the mystery of God. This idea, which is called apocalyptic in its more uh, catastrophic version and millenarian in its more pastoral version, is the idea that is the necessary correlative to the concept of uh, Eden, and the unique moment of man's creation by God. If man's creation occurred at a unique moment in the history of the universe, then presumably after the expiation of the sin of Eden, God will gather man once again into the mystery. So this idea, <clears throat> which when encountered outside the religious framework in individuals, it, uh, in a secular or desacralized uh, vocabulary is labeled pathology. It, it, the expectation of eminent transformation of the environment with the individual somehow playing a central role, this recognized pathological symptom in the individual is nevertheless uh, the driving force behind much of our own civilization. We as educated rationalists, the most rational 5% of society, in spite of our pretensions to intellectual revolution, we are far, I believe, from feeling the real force of what this is. But at the folkloric level, the attractor of the end of the world is very strong. And uh, you may recall some five years ago, the Secretary of the Interior was asked why he wasn't saving more of America's forests. And he replied that since Jesus was coming, he saw no reason to save the forest because the end of the world was imminent. So... Uh, I, I find this thinking very interesting, and I have personally certainly experienced its power. Uh, what is this intuition of the end of the world? And now that we're beginning to gather more data, uh, that science is actually beginning to pay back on the promises made in the 18th century and give us a complete and deep description of at least the physical and astronomical universe, what we're seeing is a highly chaotic um, domain. There isn't a uh, stable body in the solar system that isn't deeply pockmarked with in asteroidal impact from the inner planets to the moons of the gas giants. There is tremendous visual uh, evidence of uh, catastrophic episodes throughout uh, the history of the solar system. So uh, we discussed uh, uh, in another meeting inconsistencies in nuclear theory with the output of neutrinos from the sun. Is there a problem there? Human history uh, itself, uh, in, to my mind, can be seen as a kind of shock wave attendant upon the eschatology. That if we were to imagine for a moment that God or a super transmundane mind were to enter into the ordinary biological and evolutionary life of a planet, 
then I think we would have to agree that there would be some kind of shockwave of anticipation, some kind of sense of the eminence of the disruption of ordinary events before it was, in fact, eminent. And uh, this very brief period, which we have experienced over the past 20,000 years, is this thing, I believe. And these religions, which have anticipated this thing in this rather crude end of the world scenario are somehow on to something, something that is, I think, a message coming from the biological level, if you will, uh, about the inherent instability of the world. Ralph's models and Prigogine's models and all this has established the role of the unexpected perturbation in the creation of the cosmos, but I don't think we've quite factored it into our day-to-day -day model of what's going on. One of the startling things that I find when I look back on my own life of slightly more than 40 years is the number of things that have happened in my life that we were told would never happen. I mean, I have seen presidents assassinated, human beings landed on the moon, uh, robots to Mars, all of these high improbabilities in a single lifespan, which we all share. So I think that uh, we are sort of on automatic pilot with our assumptions that in spite of all our theory making, we are living in a, basically a probabilistic uh, synchronistically flattened universal plane, what if the urgency and the uniqueness of the human historical moment actually signaled yet more urgent and even more exotic moments to come and that we are somehow witness to a major phase transition in the career of self-reflecting bios in the universe and that for us it's the end of the world but you know this is a meaningless phrase it's simply a complete systemic reorganization on the uh, scale of metamorphosis in lepidoptera it's just a complete meltdown of the previous world system and then uh, a recasting at the behest of higher mind, Gaian mind, the world soul, it isn't clear. But uh, if we could strip the provincialism from the message of these apocalyptic uh, religions, I think they, are, they explain what history is. They have a deep intuition of instability and... Uh, in the same way that I described the reluctance of plants in a botanical garden to venture out on an unstable tree limb, I think uh, these apocalyptic religions are trying, they are all prophetistic religions. They are trying to extract something out of the human future that is of no casual interest. It may, in fact, involve uh, the survival, yes or no, of uh, the planet. So I'm interested in ideas of, like that the transcendental object is somehow leaking information back into the past at a 3% rate or something like that, that uh, shamans and mystics and psychedelic travelers are in fact getting a very incomplete low-grade signal about this event that is, I think, based on what we talked about last night, somehow built into the structure of space and time that the presence of our minds indicates that we are very near this enormous concressing singularity. Minds cannot exist except within, you know, 25,000 years of complete concrescence of one of these things. They do not arise in parts of the universe where concrescence is not approaching its climax. So, uh, I don't really know the relevance of all this for theory making if in fact the 
the concrescence is upon us, then really all we can do is chat about it as it comes down around our ears over the next 25 years. And it, we are in such a tidal grip of the field that it really doesn't matter. We can only observe it knowing, having you know the meager satisfaction that we made a, a, a amusing model of it. If longer periods of time are available, then uh, you know it might be worthwhile to undertake to study this phenomenon and its role in human history, and so forth and so on. But it. Uh, it's more than simply the calendrical pressure from the approach of the second millennium. It's also all these graphs drawn by very straight people of resources and population density and demand for hydroelectric energy and levels of strontium in milk and all of this stuff. I mean, who can look at all this stuff and not say it's either the yawning grave or there's going to be a complete the lake is going to turn over. There's going to be a complete system reversal uh, because this cannot go on. It's abiotic. And I think life has a terrifying tenaciousness. I mean, life seized hold of this planet a billion years ago, a billion and a half, two billion years ago, and managed it through hellfire again and again, managed it back toward stable equilibria that were supportive of biota. And, you know, there were asteroid infalls and continents ground to dust, and we don't even know what went on. And life uh, kept hold of this chunk of ground. So uh, I think uh, the advent of intelligence must signal a crisis of a greater magnitude. That's why I suggest that the stellar dynamics should be looked at very carefully or something like that. It's a different order of magnitude. Uh, and it's seeping into our religions and into our politics and into our um, psychedelic experiences and into the general imagination. I, I think we're standing on the lip of a uh, hyperdimensional volcano of some sort toward which all history is being poured at a great rate. We have the peculiar f good fortune of fulfilling the wish conveyed in the uh, Irish toast, may you be alive at the end of the world. <laughs>